Hi, today we're going to do a painting called Doorway to Heaven. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to do clouds, we're going to do a transparent angel, and we're going to do some steps leading up to a doorway, which is also going to be transparent. It's got a very ethereal look to it. We'll need these following paints. We have Prussian blue, we have ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, lamp black, and Payne's gray, as well as we have white. First thing we want to mix up here is to get some cerulean blue going. So to get a little bit of white, let's take in some cerulean blue. And we'll probably want that a little bit deeper in color. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's get in with some of our Prussian blue. Now on this, we're just going to use a little bit of it. It'll just give us a little tint on the clouds that we're going to be doing. We want it not to be pure white. We want a little bit of a tint, and this will give us a little warm tint, just a little like purplish tint to it. And we don't need a whole lot of that, just Something else getting a little too deep, I got a little bit more white. Okay, now we're going to take just a little bit of black, not much, just a little bit, and we're going to mix it in with the blue. It keeps it from looking a little too stark. It's colors straight up or a little too harsh. If you take a little bit of black, like with clouds, it mutes it down, it makes it a lot more pleasant to the eye. So we'll just drop that down just a little bit. You can see how it's taking away that harsh blue look. Now it's looking a little more mellow blue. That's what we want. Okay, we'll do the same thing with cerulean. Just a little bit. Okay, the next thing we want to do is take some liquid and we'll put it down here. We're going to mix all the paint up with the liquid. What the liquid will do for this is it'll help smooth the paint out because when you're doing it on canvas, it's very dry. Um, and when you put the liquid on it, it'll make it smoother. And when you start blending, everything will just blend out real smooth for you. So let's put a little liquid down here. Okay. And we may need to get more liquid as we go along. Okay, now take your, your two inch brush and get a little bit of that liquid on there. And generally what I like to do is just to get a head start is just start smearing it on here. You don't have to make it real thick. Just give it a little bit 
of coating on here. Just kind of giving it a head start to be nice and smooth for our blending. going to give it a head start so it gets a little bit damp here when we start throwing down the colors it doesn't grab the paint right away and makes it so it doesn't move anywhere okay generally when I start out with uh, with any kind of sky I usually start out light and then I'll go the next shade darker the next shade darker and then when I start blending it I'll do it the same way I'll blend from the lighter part to the next darker part get that blended then go to the next one and the reason for that is once you start picking up paint when you start smoothing you're going to get some you're going to pick up some paint when you start picking up paint you want to go from the lighter part to the darker if you start blending everything and you get down to the darker part and you come back to the white you're going to be throwing that dark paint right onto the white and you're going to defeat the whole purpose so now that we've got this uh, pretty well dampened on the back here with liquid let's take a little bit of white get a little bit of liquid on it you still want it wet you don't want to go straight up on the paint just a little bit of liquid on it and let's just start in the corner over here and just throw a little bit down Now grab a little bit more liquid. Now let's start grabbing some cerulean blue here. Okay, I'm going to grab that. And again, we want to keep that white area in there, so try to stay out of that for right now. If you come into it at all, you know, just do a little bit like this. And see how it's starting to mix already. You can move in a little bit on it. I wouldn't go all the way in, just, just like that. And don't come back into it that way there. I'm just kind of getting a head start. Okay. Now grab, grab some more liquid. Let's grab some more cerulean. If you need to, grab some more liquid and put it down there again. Okay, grab a little bit of this. Now let's go into the Prussian blue. Now you notice when I started putting down the paint, because I'm going from lighter to darker, I didn't start putting the Prussian paint right up against the blue. The reason for that is what I'm doing is I'm mixing it here. Now that it's kind of thin on the brush, you can see there's not a whole lot. Now, from this point where they're supposed to mix, now I'll come up and start mixing it. Otherwise, if you put it, the paint straight up on here, now you're going to be starting to blend up a little bit higher. We don't want that. We want it about half cerulean and about half Prussian blue. So start down here until your paint gets kind of thin, then start mixing it in. And you, we're, gonna, we're gonna use the big brush for the real mixing. But we're just getting a head start with this like this. See, now it's getting a nice blend without being all the way up on top. All right, a little bit more Prussian blue. Again, so you start down about here because you got a real thick area. Then once you, you can feel, you can feel the paint getting thin on your brush. 
once you get that going, then start coming back up. That'll give you a head start into blending. Just like that. Okay, some more Prussian blue down here. Finish it all up. And again, don't get don't get your paint too thick. You want just enough paint that you're covering the canvas, but you don't want to get it too thick. If you get it too thick, that's more that you have to play with. It's going to take longer for it to dry. Just enough paint to cover it. You know, you want it to be thicker than like like this area here, but you want it to be th you want it to cover the area and you don't want a real thick paint anywhere. A little bit more liquid, a little bit more Prussian blue, and we'll finish it off here. Now you can see we got a good head start going with this. Put down the paint thinner. Now take your three inch brush, make sure it's nice and dry. And this is just a regular house brush, you know, something you would paint on the side of a house. Just make sure it's an oil based um, bristles on here because if it's um, the, the latex bristles, they're a little bit coarser and they're not gonna give you the nice smoothing effect that we want. So make sure it's a, a house painting brush that's for oil paint. Okay, now that's nice and dry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start smoothing here, a little bit to the lighter part, get that smoothed in, and just work our way down into the darker area. As we go, we're going to clean off the brush. I use a towel um, just to clean it off. It's a lot easier. You can use a paper towel, whatever you want. But periodically, we're going to clean the brush off so that we don't grab some of this darker paint on top of that one. You want to, you want to just smooth the surface. Basically, you're going to be moving this white paint to the cerulean on top of its surface and the same thing down here. Just give it a... And we don't need it to be pure white up here, but we wanted to have a lighter spot, so we started off with white. So now you can see it's starting to turn a little bit of blue. That's okay, because we're going to have white clouds anyhow on here. But you wanted to get a, a head start of a light area going down to a darker area. So just keep mixing it. Okay, once you start seeing where it's, it's starting to bring some of the paint back in, just clean your brush off with a paper towel or a regular towel. Get it fairly cleaned off and then just come back here again. Okay, there we're getting it. Now the key to this brush though, the key to this, this brush, although I use it for, for blending anything, um, anything that I want going from a, a smooth surface from light to dark or dark to light, anything that I want to transition from a really smooth transition from a, a dark to light or a blue to red, whatever it is, if I'm smoothing it out with this brush, the key to it is actually feeling it. You don't want to just press hard and just rub it on. You want to feel it. After a while you'll get to feel just how much pressure to put down. The more pressure you put down on it, the more you're going to blend out. If you have a very light pressure, it's going to just touch the surface and smooth it out just a little bit. Like when we, some of the paintings that I do, uh, I do sea foam. Or even on this, we're going to do some clouds. We're going to put detail with the clouds, and some of the detail we're going to want to smooth out so it's not just a harsh paint glob on there. But we don't want to lose the detail we put down. So that's why you have to use this very lightly. Now for something like this, you can press harder because we want to just get it blended from one area to the other. When we start going into detail, you want it, it's going to be touch, a real light touch on this. And that does wonders, you'll see. Okay, so let's finish off blending this down.
Now also you might notice as I'm, I'm blending this in here that I'm going one way and then I go the other way. And you need to do that. If you're blending something from like, again, we're going from light to dark here, we're going from medium to dark here. If you're going just in one direction, you're gonna have streaks in there. And if you wanna completely blend it out, almost like an airbrush, uh, you, you're gonna have to go smooth it some way this way, then go the opposite direction. Smooth it that way, then come back and forth. So it's basically a crisscross, and that gives you a, a perfect blending all the way down. Now again, you start seeing where it looks a little scratchy in here. That's when you start have to, you're going to need to clean your brush off so you're not having so much paint on your brush. And then just come back in real lightly. And we'll touch that up. There we go. Okay, now we can start moving down into the Prussian blue. And again, the same thing. We come down with a little bit, go back and forth, sometimes this way, sometimes that way. And just you just want to get the paint just so it's all nice and smooth out. Clean your brush out every now and then once it starts getting a little scratchy. And again, just real lightly hit that and you start knocking all those scratches out and it starts looking real smooth, like it's airbrushed. And then here, just real smooth. and just work your way right on down to the bottom part here. Okay, once you start getting satisfied with what you have blended there, and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be putting clouds in here and we'll be smoothing that out, but you get the general feel of this. Once you have that pretty much smoothed out and everything looks good, then clean your, your big brush off and we'll start putting in the clouds. Now for the clouds, what we're going to use is a wrap brush, probably about a medium size like this one is here. Uh, earlier on in this video, I showed you how to make your own wrap brushes, or you can go online and you can buy one that I've already made up so you can see how they're made and you can make your own. They're very easy to do. It's really just a chopped up brush, but you want some kind of a point to it. And the reason for that is when you're laying down, like we're going to be doing clouds here, you can get the tip and just get a nice edge of a cloud and as you press more and more you're getting more and more bristles to make like an edge and then go into a real fluffy part of the cloud. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Okay, so we're just going to grab regular white paint now. Now we're not going to use the liquids right at this point and the reason for that is we've already used a lot of liquid in the other paints. So this paint is nice and wet and saturated. If we put liquid on it now, we're gonna, it's going to make it too wet and it's going to be taking away from what we lay down. We don't want that. So we're basically going to be laying paint on top of what we have right now. So the white part that we're going to be using for the, uh, for the clouds here, you want just straight white paint without the liquid. And you don't want a big glob of it. See how thin my, my brush is right here? There's not a lot of paint on there. There's enough to put down but it's not a big thick glob. You don't want that. Okay, now when you're using this brush, you don't paint like, like you would a normal flat brush. 
instead of painting on a cloud or painting the cloud, what you're going to be doing is you're, instead of painting it, you're going to be pushing. And the reason you do that, as you push, these bristles will start flickering out and they'll give you that abstract form of a cloud. It might take a little while to get to practice it to get that feel, but it really is quite easy once you start doing it. But that's what gives you that abstract look of a real cloud. So we're going to start in, say, up in this area here, and we're just going to kind of give ourselves a little outline of what we want to do. Now again, make sure you don't put too much paint on your on your brush, but you know we're just going to come in here and maybe in this part. See how I'm, I'm pushing it rather than painting it. I'm pushing it. That'll give me a fluffy part of the cloud up here, and then I can, as I'm pushing it, I real I push hard to get that big part and then as I, I want a little detail I give it less pressure so just the very tip of that is hitting that area and that'll give me detail on the outside. Here I'll show you again. Okay so we have a fluffy cloud here but I want you know coming out to a little bit of point. See how I'm doing that? And then maybe that comes back up there and you know another part of this clouds over here. Okay, and again, maybe up in this area, I want a little bit heavier, and then come down thin. And when you're looking at a cloud, it has all different forms. It's not, not everything is just all white. You have the dark side of the cloud that's, that the light is hitting here, it's making it lighter, and then there's a dark side. So actually, by not hitting that, you're making that dark side, because you already have the dark side underneath here. So again, we'll just do a little bit here, okay, here we might want to put in a little bit bigger one so it's not all looking the same. So again, as you can see, when, you're, when you start pushing that, you start getting in little details in here. It is great. When we start knocking it back, it's going to make it look real. All right, maybe a little bit more up in here. Just have fun with it. Whatever is in your head, just you can follow what I'm doing, or if you have an idea that you want it to look a little puffier here or there, you know, just have fun with it. Just remember, you know, you're you're pushing it. You're not painting it. And if you start off a little bit, you have a little detail, and then the more you push, the more paint you're getting in here. See, I'm pushing really hard. I got paint coming in, and then I can just lessen the pressure, and I have a little detail coming out here. Okay, you might want to clean your brush every now and then because you are going to start picking up some of the darker paint and you don't want to throw that on top. You want to kind of, as much as you can, get the white on top of this paint rather than mixing it with that paint and putting this darker blue back on top of the white as you're going down and coming back to it.
and when you're painting if there's certain areas that you want to be like the dark side of the cloud you know again just leave them blank like this is here and that'll give that appearance as the light's hitting this part of the cloud and then it's coming over and that's the dark part and then it picks up the light again from this part of the cloud just leave it blank you don't need to put in another color you already have the dark part down and you know just go along and whatever feels comfortable to you but by now you can probably see the the value of this rat brush it just makes clouds better than you could possibly do with a with a regular paintbrush and it's real easy you know rather than trying to sit and draw each cloud with a particular shape you're just letting the brush do this work and this is just a lay down once we start getting the detail you'll see ex exactly the how well this rat brush works Now let's go back and take the three inch brush, make sure that you have it all cleaned out or dried out from the last time that we were smoothing everything. And now we're gonna go over and we're gonna knock the clouds back so they look real. Right now it just looks like a bunch of scratchy clouds like most people paint. They don't do the last step and this is the last step. Okay, we're gonna go over the clouds. We're gonna knock them back and make them nice and soft and fluffy. To do that, you need this brush to smooth everything out. The key here is, like I said before, pressure. The more pressure you put push down on this brush, the more it's going to smooth it out. And there's going to be areas you're going to want that. But the other areas where there might be some detail on the edge of a cloud that you want to keep, just barely hit it, and it'll knock it down to where it looks even rather than, you know, um, like painted on with scratches here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's start again from the light part and let's work down. Okay, just hit it lightly. And I mean, I'm just barely touching this. But now you can see as I'm hitting this, see there's certain areas in here, there's certain wispiness in this that I like. Okay, like this area. I like this area. I like this part that's coming down here. This looks to me a little odd. So what I'm gonna do is leave that alone now that I just touched it and I'm gonna hit this a little bit heavier to knock that back a little bit more and to smooth it out a little bit more. So now I'm just gonna take the edge and just smooth that down. And there, now we got a nice starting of a cloud. So you took this edge off, but it looks like I have a nice lights hitting just the edge of the clouds here. We're going to do that for all of this down here and we'll even add a couple of little areas that we, we think we want some more in here. You can do that. Another key that will help you with clouds too is they are billowy. So they are round and fluffy clouds. So if when, you, when you're using the brush, rather than going straight on it, use your brush on a circular motion. That'll kind of follow the billow of the cloud as you're smoothing it out. So like this area here, you know, instead of going straight with it, I want to f feather it out a little bit. See, I'm, I'm going in a circular motion. And see, now it's making fluffier, billowed clouds that are out here. 
And again, see there's certain areas in here. I really like the detail here. So I'm just going to hit them a little bit and then leave it alone. Because the more you hit it or the, the heavier you push, the more you're going to smooth that out. Where this area here, say I want to smooth that more. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to hit that a little bit more and a little bit harder. I'm going to be a little more aggressive with it. And now I've got this smoothing out to nothing and I've got a nice detail going up here. And that's pretty much how you make the clouds. So we'll do the same up in here. Again, keep that in a nice circular motion and just barely, when I'm doing this, I'm just barely touching it just to knock it back so that it looks real. Once I get, once I get it to where it's got a nice feel to it, now I can take a look at it and see what I want to do with it. And I go, okay, I like this, but I don't like that. So now I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to blend this in a little bit more. And again, I'm still going in a circular motion because I want to follow that cloud, the shape of the cloud, which would be a billowy rounded shape. Okay, now just come back and I'm just barely touching that surface of that just to smooth it all out. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to hit this back, see what I've got. Just lightly hit it. Okay, actually I kind of like everything, maybe a little bit over here I'll hit. And this part here, I like, like that, but I think I'm going to knock this back some. Keep in mind when you're doing this, your whole key is pressure. When you go real light, you're just going to barely touch it. The heavier you hit, the more you're going to push it down. So start off light, because there might be something you, you, that's there that you're not seeing off the bat. If you, if you have it light and you just barely touch it, you can always hit it again, make it harder, and smooth that out even more. But if you come in too hard right off the bat, you've lost the detail that you might want to keep. So start off light and just work slowly, a little bit more pressure until you get it smoothed out where you want to go. Another thing that I do too is although this is a, a three inch brush and it's really big, when I'm smoothing down, a lot of times I'll never use the full size of this brush. When I'm hitting these clouds, I'm probably hitting about that much of the brush or less. It depends. If there's a real tight area, I just want this smoothed out but nothing more, I might be just hitting it with that edge of it. So you don't have to use the whole brush to knock it down. If on an overall, yes, but when you start getting into actually moving the cloud, you know, smoothing this out and leaving that detail alone, you're going to be ending up just hitting an edge of it and just going in and just, instead of hitting it real heavy, you might just be getting just a small edge of that and smoothing that out. But it, again, keep your brush dry and keep it, um, as less paint on top of it as much as possible you don't want to be putting paint on top of this. You want to just knock this back. So keep this pretty well clean. Again, just barely go over it first hand just to see what you've got. See, this is taking shape totally different than when I first started out. So now that I've got it knocked back somewhat, now I can see what shape I've got and I can say, okay, I like this, I don't like that. And again, see, I'm just hitting this much of that brush just to smooth out in that one area. And then I'll come over and smooth the whole thing back. And just a very light touch to it. It's all about touch.
Okay. We got a nice little cloud thing going here. And see how it really is very quite easy. It might take you a little practice to get used to the pressure of hitting this and how to use the wrap brush on pushing it rather than actually just painting it like you regularly do. But once you get the hang of it, and it's not that hard, once you get the hang of it, you'll be making beautiful clouds all over. You'll be painting clouds like crazy because it comes out so nice. Okay, so that's going to pretty much wrap it up for today. What we're going to have to do now is we're going to let this paint, painting dry. When it dries, we're going to be putting in uh, some steps in here going like a stairway to heaven. And then we're going to have a doorway here that lights shining through. All of this is going to look transparent and uh, ethereal. And then we're going to have an angel up in here, which again, it's going to have a transparent look. Now when this painting dries, what you need to do um, either tonight when it when it's dry, because the liquid doesn't take that long to dry. Uh, in a few hours, this should be dry. Um, once the painting is dry, or tomorrow, either way, uh, come back and whatever you want to put in, I'm going to have an angel in here, and like I said, some stairs and a door. Uh, just get a pencil and draw that in. Now, I find the best way to, to put anything down, especially when I'm working with white, and we're going to be using a lot of white. We're going to have a white angel and white steps. Um, if you can get a white pencil, it's a regular pencil, but it has uh, like white lead in it. It's almost like chalk. And use the white in that. It works out better. And I'll tell you why. Because when you put in pencil on top of this, this is going to be dry when you do that. When you put in pencil, that lead is that's black. And we're putting white paint on top of it. Sometimes if it's really heavy, if you, if you drew your line real thick, it's going to take a lot of white paint to cover that. Where if you use a white pencil, when you're hitting that, it kind of dissolves and you never see the pencil line that you've got. So what I want you to do tonight is to draw in your angel that you want in here, a doorway, and a couple of lines of some steps. And we'll, tomorrow when we come back, um, I'll show you how to put the angel in and the steps in, and we'll have more fun. Mm -hmm.